Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Natural Food Pantry Education Initiative. Joining me today for a discussion on inflammation is Dr. Kate Rayom, naturopathic doctor. Dr. Kate Rayom is a graduate and former faculty member of the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine. As a very reputable educator, Dr. Kate speaks internationally on many topics related to health and wellness. She is the best known author, the author of the best selling book, Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox how a little known vitamin could save your life. And we're fortunate to have Dr. Kate as a regular presenter through our Natural Food Pantry Education Initiative. Welcome back, Dr. Kate. It's always so much fun to have you with us for these little discussions on health and wellness topics. Hi, Natasha. Thanks. Great to be back. See you again. So inflammation is a term that we hear a lot about, particularly in our industry, in the health food store, in, in the holistic health um, world. Um, so can you speak a little bit on that? Why do you think it is that inflammation comes up so much? Mm -hmm. I think there's a greater understanding and appreciation of inflammation as a phenomenon, you know, a biological process that either contributes to, exacerbates, or underlies almost any health problem that we're dealing with. Uh, inflammation is gonna be probably there in some shape or form. And I think if more people had a basic understanding of what it is, how it works, both for and against us, uh, as well as how to keep it in check, for example, that that helps to sort of restructure or reframe steps that we can take to make sure inflammation is working for us and not against us. So that's a great point. Um, some people might not have a real understanding of what inflammation is exactly. Can you explain what inflammation is in the body? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the most important thing to be aware of right off the bat is that inflammation is actually a healing process. Uh, you know, it has a bad rap because it, we tend to associate it with pain and unpleasant symptoms, but that's why inflammation is there. So in a perfect world, how inflammation would work is if you have some sort of injury, irritation, infection, uh, something that triggers or something that needs to be fixed, the body will produce one or more uh, inflammatory compounds. We have up to about two dozen of these that the body can produce depending on what's triggering the inflammation. And they will go about doing their job in trying to heal the injury, infection, irritation, whatever it is. Um, during that time, there may be symptoms associated with the inflammation, the classic symptoms being uh, pain, swelling, heat, redness, loss of function. And then once the healing process is complete, the inflammation should go away. So the body stops producing inflammatory compounds, starts producing anti-inflammatory compounds, and the whole thing resolves. That's when it's working well. Uh, but as we know, it doesn't always work so perfectly, and that's when the problems arise. Right. So when we have this acute inflammation um, as a result of an injury, an infection, the symptoms are pretty obvious. Like it's pretty obvious that your knee's inflamed when you sprain it, right? Mm -hmm. But what about silent inflammation? Uh, I know that's that's a pretty big phenomenon. Can you speak on that? Definitely, yes. We're all um, intuitively, we all understand that classic kind of inflammation. Everybody's had the experience of, you know, the uh, swollen maybe ankle because you've sprained your ankle and you intuitively know that if it's still swollen, painful, red or whatever, the healing hasn't finished. But there is this other type of inflammation that's often called silent inflammation and silent because it is not announcing itself with the typical pain and other symptoms that we associate with inflammation. But it's still inflammation. In other words, the body is still producing inflammatory compounds that are affecting us. Uh, through, that can be throughout the body, can be in specific areas. And it's that silent inflammation because it's silent, because we don't necessarily know it's there. Uh, that can be a contributor or underlying factor to chronic conditions, can make it more difficult to recover or resolve from uh, conditions, and is thought to be the underlying factor in uh, what we call silent killer disease, you know, things like heart disease, for example, or other conditions that may progress without us being aware of it, that uh, that silent inflammation can be a factor there. And can it affect the brain? I know that inflammation is linked to the brain and, and neurodegenerative conditions. So what are your thoughts on that? 
absolutely. There's a whole fascinating field of study about this. It's called neuroinflammation. And this neuroinflammation is often silent. Uh, you know, in some cases, there may be symptoms like headache or brain fog, but in many cases, the neuroinflammation, um, again, may be passing under the radar and absolutely can be affecting brain cells, brain function. So how would someone know if they're, if they're experiencing brain fog or headaches, how would they know whether it's inflammation that's causing it or something else? Good question. In some ways... Uh, so there isn't always a perfect way to tell. Yes, there are certain tests we can get uh, that can measure, you know, different markers of inflammation. Although just, you know, getting that test, um, you know, can tip you off to the fact that, yes, you have inflammation doesn't always indicate why you have inflammation or what's causing inflammation. So, yes, there are sometimes tests we can get. Ultimately, uh, it never hurts to take some kind of steps to mitigate inflammation because you'll never go wrong or go astray or do harm by doing that. Uh, but there are cases in which you can't its uh, necessarily exactly tell how much inflammation or, or whether it's contributing. But it's often uh, you know, a feature of um, any kind of health concern. So it can be a bit tricky to, uh, to determine how much inflammation is really playing a role in, in health conditions. But like you said, taking some measures to help prevent or help uh, combat inflammation can really make a difference. And you're, you can't go wrong. They're all health promoting, right? So exactly. um, what about inflammation in terms of age? Is it, I know a lot of, I hear a lot of um, older people saying, well, it's normal to experience osteoarthritis and joint pain and inflammatory conditions as I get older. Is that true? How does inflammation affect us as we age? Can we all expect to experience inflammation as we get older? So that's an excellent question because the fact is that, you know, there's a lot of people who think that uh, being in a certain amount of pain or having aches and pains is just part of getting older. And it, although it's true that, in fact, the inflammatory process does change and can start to go awry with age, in that, you know, it tends to get turned on and is much slower to turn itself off than it used to. Uh, that's absolutely true, and it is a well-documented part of the aging process. However, that doesn't mean it's inevitable. That doesn't mean we are... Uh, going to suffer with pain more so as we age or that there's nothing to do about it. So it just means that over time and with age, as we get older, it's more important to take the steps that can help combat inflammation than it was when we were younger and inflammation tended to take care of itself. Good, good point. So on that note, what can we do? What are some simple basic things that we can do to help prevent or combat inflammation in the body? Mm -hmm. There's lots of things we could do. For example, we know that having a sedentary lifestyle, so being a couch potato, actually promotes inflammation. This is counterintuitive. You think, how can you be you know, promoting inflammation by doing nothing? But that's exactly what happens. Uh, the body is meant to move. And if you don't move enough, then you are promoting inflammation. So some kind of movement, getting up and being active, uh, will help ultimately uh, combat inflammation and keep it uh, minimal. In terms of diet, there's lots we can do in terms of diet when it comes to inflammation. Now, the top thing that comes to mind is the types of fats that we eat ultimately will promote or you know, put the, the gas or the brakes on inflammation. So um, healthy fats like omega-3 essential fatty acids are well known to be anti-inflammatory. So they tend to turn down the volume on that inflammatory reaction. So doing an oil change in your diet, getting out the inflammatory fats like omega-6s from vegetable oils and in with more omega-3s, that's something that we can do, uh, as well as keeping stress managed and, and at a minimum, uh, stress actually promotes the production of inflammatory compounds. So it's directly inflammatory and it can exacerbate any kind of inflammatory condition. So those are sort of top three things that come to mind, but there's lots more that can go into it. Okay, so move more um reduce stress or manage stress stress management strategies and techniques um and omega-3 oils so taking maybe a fish oil supplement 
you know, it's hard to get enough omega-3 through diet alone. I know flax, chia, cold water fish are all great sources of omega-3. And there's some, some veggies like leafy greens that will provide some. Um, and it's really difficult for us to consume enough omega-3 through diet. So fish oil supplement is, is, is an excellent addition. <laughs> Definitely, yes. And on, on May 16th, um, you're going to be delivering a webinar through Natural Food Pantry, a free webinar on inflammation. Can you tell viewers what, 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 what can we expect? Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about inflammation, you know, what it is, how it works for and against us, uh, the types of steps that we can do to take it under control and uh, including things like uh, you know, nutrition, exercise, uh, as well as specific, there's a lots of wonderful specific natural anti-inflammatory compounds, how we can incorporate those if we need them, when we need them, uh, and those kinds of things. So kind of, um, you know, what we need to know, practical news you can use about inflammation and helping to manage it. So basically an extension of today's talk. That's right. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much for joining us again and for sharing your, your knowledge on this topic. You're welcome, Natasha. Take care. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. For more information on our education sessions and to register for Dr. Kate's upcoming webinar on inflammation, please visit the naturalfoodpantry.ca classes and services tab of our website. And be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks, everybody. Stay healthy.